Okay, question three. Um, so this time we've got a repeated linear factor on the bottom. This changes the format that we need to put it equal to. So we'd have a over this one bracket over here. Now for if there's a squared one, you need b over just one of those brackets plus c over that bracket squared. Okay, again, multiplying everything through by this then. So um, on the left hand side, it's all going to cancel. On the right hand side, the x minus 1 would cancel with that x minus 1. So that leaves you x plus 3 squared. Um, for the b, I'm going to lose an x plus 3, so it leaves me with x minus 1 and an x plus 3. And on the last one then, we're going to cancel the x plus 3 squared, so that will just leave me c lots of x minus 1. Okay, going for clever substituting in numbers is a good idea here. So we're going to start off um, substituting in x equals 1 to cancel with this bracket and this bracket. So if x equals 1, I've got 3 plus 9 is 12, 16 equals... Um, here I'd have um, 1 plus 3 is 4 squared, so equals 16a. This cancels and this cancels, leaves me a as 1. Um, next, I'm going to cancel the plus 3 brackets, so I'm going to substitute in x equals minus 3. Um, when I do that, over here, um, that would give me minus 9, give me minus 27, sorry, plus 9, plus 27, minus 27 is nothing, gives me 4. This bracket cancels, this bracket cancels, which makes those two terms 0. So I've just got c lots of minus 4, which means c is minus 1. Um, you've probably noticed that we've run out of clever numbers to substitute in now. Um, so the way of getting around that is just to sub in any old number you like. I like 0, so let's go with 0. So over here I just get 4 again. Over here, um, 0 plus 3 is 3 squared is 9 and a was 1 so that's just 9. Um, here substituting in 0 minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. We want b so let's leave that as minus 3b. Over here substituting in 0 I've got c lots of minus 1. c is minus 1 anyway so that makes plus 1c. Uh, sorry just plus 1. And solving that gives us b equals 2. Okay, um, so let's move on to part B then, and we need to um, integrate this. And you probably see that this part here is the same as what we just split into partial fractions above it, so we're going to use what we've just done. Um, so if I make the a bit 1, Okay, so that's um, what we're integrating here. So the first two are fairly straightforward. You've learned about ln integrals. Uh, the differential of x minus 1 is 1. That's perfectly what we've got. So that's just um, ln x minus 1. I've put these modular signs to stop us putting any naughty negative numbers in there. Um, the second one, the differential of x plus 3 is 1. I've got 2 on the top, so I've got twice as much as I need, so it's twice ln um, x plus 3. The last one, um, some of you might try and use a ln for this. Um, it's not actually going to turn out to be a ln. There's a couple of different ways. If I just do a little bit of working out down here, um, I'm going to rewrite it as minus x plus 3 to the minus 2, and I'm trying to integrate that. You could use substitution. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I know that x plus 3 to the minus 1, when I differentiate that, because I know I need a power 1 bigger, when I differentiate that, the minus 1 comes down the front. Um, I would diff what's in the middle, so the diff of x plus 3 is just 1, so that's, I've multiplied by 1 here, gives me the same. And then I drop the power of the bracket by 1. Um, so given that I'm trying to integrate this, I know that it's going to turn out 
will be exactly x plus 3 to the power minus 1. And because we're integrating, we need our friend plus c back um, to pop on the end. <laughs>